As 3,000 Hamas terrorists breached the Gazan border with Israel the morning of October 7, 2023, 16-year-old Yitzhak Peretz was sound asleep after a long night of celebrating the end of the Jewish Holy Day Sukkot. He had no idea as the air raid sirens began to sound that 200 of those terrorists were invading his city of Sederot, the closest city to the Gazan border. As he began to receive messages and videos about what was happening in his city, he simply couldn't believe it. Alone with his grandmother, he closed the doors and the windows, grabbed a kitchen knife, and prayed that the rest of his family would make it safely home so they could shelter in place together. Today we will hear Yitzhak's harrowing story of survival on that day and the days that followed, how the devastation and loss of life in his city profoundly impacted his life, his family, his community, and his hopes for the future. Welcome to this special edition of Spiritually Speaking. Yitzhak, it's wonderful to have you here, and I know you're sitting over there in Sterot, and, and uh, it's just a pleasure to, to be able to speak to you today. So why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself, your family, and, and living in Sterot. Okay, so hi, my name is Yitzhak Peretz. I'm 16 years old. I live in Sderot, which is next to Gaza. Uh, my mother's side is from Ukraine, and my father's side is fro from Morocco. I have three siblings and I'm the youngest uh, sibling. Um, in my free time, uh, I volunteer in the Israeli Met, uh, Red Cross, which is called Magen David Adom. And I'm volunteering also with, in a youth movement, taking uh, children with disabilities and involving them with children without disabilities, which called Krempa Wings. I like to study biology in school and I like to study also history and politics. And what would you like to do uh, later in life? I would like to be a journalist or um, a doctor. Why did you tell us what happened on October 7th? On October 7th, it was just one day after we had a Jewish holiday of Sukkot. Uh, we went to sleep so late and we woke up in 6 a.m. due to the sirens that were like I never heard that much that much sirens in my life, like 20 minutes non-stop launching rockets and rockets. And for like getting this up, like every t um, each time it's like 15 seconds. So for 20 minutes, that's so many rockets and like launching and explosions all over my city. And then like when it started to get a little bit chill around like 7 a.m., my sister called me um, and told me there was terrorists uh, going through the fa uh, the fence, the border, and like getting into our country. And I said, you're bluffing me, it's not real. Every time they say it might happen, it's never happened. And it's not gonna happen this time either. And I was all alone, like with me and my grandma. And like, I just in case, I just locked all the doors, all the windows, I closed like, there were, no one can see we're home. And then we started getting videos like, um, it started to send through WhatsApp and like through Telegram and like my friends told me there's like terrorists and I said no it can be and then like so one video I said no we don't have terrorists in my city it's not it's not a real video but then like I saw uh, next to my school like a, a tourist van like uh, going through the city and like shooting cars and shooting people and everything and then like I started to get Oh my god that's real like what am i doing so like uh people started to say like uh you need to take like a knife or something to protect yourself in case they're getting in i just like took a kitchen knife and took like a box spray like in case like to put them in their face or something to run away and um like i was home alone with my grandma for a few hours then my mother and my brother came home and then my brother left us uh, to go to the army while there's still many terrorists outside and like we fell unprotected a bit without him. And then I like, uh, uh, there was starting to be rumors like on Telegram that the Hamas 
starting to put on like videos of what they're doing. So I just got in and then I saw like people that I know that actually got killed like in my city next to my school on bus stations, like people got shot in their head and like I know those people. And later, um, like we didn't have any connection with uh, uh, my other sister, like we had with one who was at her boyfriend's house and with the other one we didn't have because she keeps Shabbat. So it means she can use electricity on holiday or on Shabbat. And this situation was on Saturday. So like we were really, really panicked, like for a whole day not hearing from her. And like, meanwhile on the news, we just like, keep seeing uh, like people calling to like the the stations of the news and telling them uh, there is people shooting outside of my house. My house is burning. There is terrorists outside yells in Arabic. Like they're taking people away. We hear the screams and like, I thought maybe like it's psychological. Maybe they believe it. May it can be real. There's so many people. I thought maybe it's going to be like 12 terrorists maximum. Like we got a strong army, nothing going to happen to me, to my family. And then like, I started to realize, like I saw people was starting to get kidnapped to Gaza, like from places which are like 10 minutes drive from my house. And like, and we heard the guns, like the shooting and everything. And like, I need to stay awake like for hours, like for around 20 more, even 30 hours awake. Like just fearing and being quiet and not like eating or going to the restroom or something like that because if they might hear us and get inside our house and like kill us. Meanwhile, the war terrorists, it was around um, 1 p.m. and my uncle called us and told us like, okay, we're leaving now. Uh, so we just like pack a few things. And, like my, my two other sisters, they're like somehow arrived to our house at that time. And like they packed their things, they went to other city on the south of Israel. And like we went um to our relatives in the center of Israel. Meanwhile, there were terrorists outside and like we like I, my uncle always tell us put seat belts. It's so important to put seat, seat belts on. But that time he just told us do not put it. It was so strange. It's a little thing, a little detail, but detail, but it's so strange like to have that. And we were like driving so fast and like we got like on a five people car, like seven people with all our luggages and everything. We just like ran away from there. And like, meanwhile, my city was evacuated only a week later. And like when I was there for a month and a half, like I started hearing what happened, like uh, knowing like people you actually know got killed or like. Like, for example, the son of my teacher got killed at the Nova Festival or like um, a taxi driver that took us to many MUN competitions that I participate. And like, it's so horrible to see those things happen. But like, I still can't believe something like that happened. But then after a month and a half, uh, we came back home. There's many sirens going on. Like now it's a bit less. But we're already used to the sirens. It's like 20 years where I'm living and no one pays attention. No one in the world pays attention. And like we're hearing like um, the like uh, fire in Gaza, like of our soldiers and that. And also like I was very, very worried. Like my brother was, um, he needed to join the, after the October 7th happened to the military. Like to, and it was like uh, medical stuff and he, rescued people out of Gaza, like uh, Israeli soldiers wounded. And it was like, it was so horrible to see what's going on. And just like uh, two days ago, I went with my school. We, d we don't have school since October. Like we don't study. They just picked up a few students from the area that like is here and took us to a hospital in the south of Israel, just like to make like some uh, injured soldiers happy and like, to be with them and like I cried there so much it was so hard to see like how other people come to to save me to save my life to save the life of my people just like you knowing every day in my in regular school once a week we have like a ceremony which we uh our like main teacher of our grade tells us um about why we're here in this country 
like that people died for us to get here to live safely and not be afraid on our lives but like these teachers lives in Berry, which is the uh, one uh, village that got really really hurt in the october 7th and like to see all of that like kids in my age, age from school that is like five like around five ten minutes away from my school got kidnapped to gaza in my age so like thinking what it, it would have me, been me and it's just like unbelievable that's just unbelievable and and you know we hear it on the news but to talk to somebody who lived through it um makes it seem so much uh more real and horrifying i, I just uh when you when you left your house and, and when your mother and siblings came to your house did they see any terrorists or were there like terrorist cars driving by? My brother um, and my mother, like uh, their their house is nearby. So they got into our house. But after that, my brother left the house and like he went, like he said, I need to go serve in the military and that. And like he have a gun and everything. So like he said, OK, I'm going out. And like he chose like to go through. There is two directions to get out or into our city. One is uh, more closest to Gaza and the other is like um, Eastern to our city. So he took that path and like he saw so many bodies and that he doesn't want to talk about it at all. But like, and he's like, mm, it's not, it's not sharing his feelings and like he's a very, very strong person. But still you can see like something is a bit off with him about everything that happened. And like, he's, there was so many terrorists outside on that day on like it was still october 7th it was around 1 p.m on october 7th there was 3000 terrorists outside in our area like and he just like went outside and we were so panicked and so freaked out till he got to his uh, city where he lives in the center of israel so like it was really hard when your uncle came to pick you up how was how was that must have been ex extraordinarily dangerous also for him to drive into stay road to get you we understood we need to get out like after we left uh our neighbor like we live in a building and our neighbor told us after we left there was like some tourists around our block so uh my my uncle and my aunt they said okay um we're gonna wait till the sirens get a bit off, like they're gonna be a siren, and then we're gonna get to our car and pick you up and just like fly away from there like so fast. And like I remember when I sat on the car, we started driving, and like I looked looked outside, and like our city is not a big city, it's a very 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 small city, and like I know all places, I'll know all street, I know all streets and everything, and like the way to my school is like the way to get out of the city so like we were driving there and that's the way i take usually every day uh, by foot going to school and i saw like a car like crashed there or like something burning there or like house like um that is all shot or like bullets on the street like while driving and seeing like already taking the bodies at our city but like i saw like their blood on the on the floor next to our library of school knowing like if it would happen only a day later like while we all go to school with all of that like i know like uh i've been told that like the terrorists that got like caught in our city they had map of our school so like what if it would happen like a day after when we're at school like just imagining all of that it, it could have been just a bigger catastrophe than it is now but like still seeing and knowing like all those names and all of those people they just like died for no reason actually like and then people call us evil and mean while 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 we see and you can see in footages and hostages they're telling like how they been kidnapped not by uh soldiers of the hamas not by them by civilians that got in and reporters and journalists from gaza who got in and just like grabbed people with them like people in my age grabbed old grandmas and women on their bicycle and beat them up or taking children to the center of gaza and like beat them for no reason like 
why would you beat a child no matter like what happened just like horrible like to know all of that and like see all the videos and see what happened just a straight away from your house so it's so horrible was anybody in your school killed uh on october 7th like some relatives of the students like mother father like in my grade there is one student that his father was killed and there is so many people like no, everyone in our city know at least one person who got killed. Know anybody who was kidnapped? I know one hostage went to a similar program that I went and like some of my friends went to that program of peace, peace building and she's now still in Gaza. So knowing like there is, it's just like the general thought of knowing like someone just like you, maybe in your age or with same hobbies. Like with same dreams, same hopes, same home, everything. Just like got taken from his house, ripped from his house. And just like got into Gaza where, been, where he's been beaten, raped. And so many other horrible things. And like no one cares. Like let them be there. No one actually doing actual things except of like talking on the TV. And that's it. Like it's so ho horrible like there was one girl um in my I, my group of age like in my grade from other school that is so nearby and like she was held in gaza for 50 days it, it's so unreal and she needed to she was kidnapped alone with her sister she needed to take care of her while um her uh her kidnappers like children also abused them like how how can it be real or something like that to happen to someone in my age to like some some girl that could be my classmate how are you coping with all of that like 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 how are you dealing with all of that still it's so hard to cope with that like not seeing your friends for four months uh, most of them are not in my city most of them are spread all over the country and even around the world like uh, kids that i go to school with just like who could they just ran out out of our country like my best friend is now uh in russia with her family also now i'm in my city but like i can i'm so afraid to go outside like for a run or just like i can count on my 10 fingers the amount of time that i've been outside of my house or in when i've been in the center of israel outside of like a house once I walked to the barber all alone, like in the city, and I just looked um, like every few houses, you see house, it was like, um, like um, herded by bullets or like bus stations or everything. Like first time, like I've seen a bus station after October 7th, after the photos that I see on my, on my school bus stations, there were actually around eight to 12 people killed. And like, when you see, like, why wouldn't the car come right now to the bus station that I'm uh, waiting for the bus there and just shoot me and nothing will, nothing will change in the world. And that's the general feeling. Like, if someone would come on October 7th and kill me or kill my family or kidnap me, nothing would change in the world. And that's so... It's so hard to believe, like, when it's far away, like, when we hear about wars, like, we used to speak a lot about wars in, in class, like, in Russia and Ukraine, and just, like, people choosing sides immediately and everything, but, like, it's started to be, like, a trend, like, all around the world. There's a war, we have to pick a side now. There's no people hurting from both sides. There's not, there is not one side to the coin, like... People doing horrible things, but this side is the underdog, so the um, one side must be wrong and one side must be right. That's not true in life. How have you been spending your time during the past four months? At the beginning, it was so hard to do anything. We just like, I just watched the news 24 7. Like, after around a month, I started to like get a little bit off the news and like started to, um, read started to i don't know to ride to, i started to learn italian like many things like planning vacations like things that actually 
like a bit of a dreaming away of all the situation. Yeah, have you been back in your school? Two days ago, when we like uh what uh, went to go like to visit a uh, wounded soldiers in the hospital it was like first time I've been to my school since four months. Like I almost cried. I met like two uh, girls from my class also there. We came to our class and we started like to literally cry. It was so hard. And like we in in our schools in our area, um, there's soldiers sleeping in like. Uh, the wars sleeping before they entered Gaza and like every soldier's unit just like left uh, we love you on on our board we love you this 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 unit and it was so nice to see did, did you say there was a Palestinian girl in your class there is some Palestinians in our school who live in our city and I can say also for them like they feeling what I feel about like everything that is happening because people came to their city it's it no matter the nationality or that just like when some evil animals can come to your city and murder in brutality also many arab um arab israelis were murdered and kidnapped to the gaza strip it's so interesting to see that no one mentioned that like women that are wearing hijab that you can see the terrorists saw they when wearing hijab but still got killed like I got Palestinian students in my class, they like I got one, and like in other classes there is more. But like to to understand that those people are not humans because they're murdering for no reason other people also from their own nation. What made your family come back to stay? My mother worked. Um, in a work she have to be um in the play in her place like she work uh, she's like a deputy manager at a supermarket in our city so she have to work and my uncle and aunt like one aunt the aunt uh, works in a kibbutz and my uncle in a factory is the manager and like he had to go back to like keep running the the system i guess like me and my cousin and my grandma we just like was so tired and of not being home and just want to come back like there's no place like home it's like true do you ever did you ever think that 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 where you're living is too unsafe to stay there or you no. just think this is your home and that's it many people from outside and also from our city say you people should not live here like so next to the border and so not like having like children don't need to grow up like that and i i'm a, i agree but like if you just if i'll just leave my house and people in the north will leave their house so it would be easier for them like to get more closer to the rest of the country and like it's kind of it's like kind of the meaning of zionism like to stay in your house to live freely to living the land of israel and like i believe this whole land like is holy and like i believe there i should be here like i'm so glad that i was born here with like um the carvings of like red wind flowers like all over uh start uh, blooming now or like just um so much history in the place where i live in where i'm sleeping where i'm eating everything it's so great to live in that place but many people from here uh you'll hear it a lot say it's 90 percent heaven and 10 percent hell yeah that's the exact definition like we got the most beautiful sunset most beautiful nature so i wouldn't want to go away from here yeah th thank you for all of that um it's so important to hear your perspective um so so yeah so I was gonna just finally ask you what what your what your hope is. My hope for the future is basically to have peace here. It's a cliche, but I really want peace, and all my friends and all the people around me in my city, although what we've been through through, we want peace. We want to live peacefully, not to have fifteen seconds to run away from rockets or 
to see horrible things going on. We want like to wake up and not be afraid on our lives maybe. I think it's a legitimate thing to ask in our world. And like I believe maybe if we're talking about the future that someday like this is gonna be changed by people from my generation, from my age, from my place that will change it. Thank you. You're you're an amazing person and, and um I'm so proud to to get to know you. I really, really am and, and, and I'm just I feel so beyond horrible for what for what you've been through and I, and I just hope that that um you're able to find healing and that everybody there is is able to you know start to heal from this and I know how hard that is and particularly since I know that just like six or seven hours ago you had another siren I really appreciate it to you too and your people that are doing so much to just like take my story there's just one voice and like it could really make a change like for me for my people and for many others so i want to thank you a lot for like your viewers and for you too and for your channel yitzhak's powerful testimony gives us a glimpse into the depth of the trauma experienced by so many in Sederot and other israeli border communities on october 7th his message to us is not only to remember the devastation of that moment in time but how important it is to have the courage to look beyond the trauma, to hope for a better future for himself, his family, his city, and his country. We pray for healing and for peace. Shalom, salam, shanti, peace.